everybody. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the part four of activity 4.2. I named this the wrong thing, you'll notice. So a couple of things I'm going to show you. One, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and rename. This is from the previous video. Very simple to do if I rename it. It's 4.2 part one. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing then. Uh, let's save. Enter. Okay, maybe I didn't hit enter last time. Okay, so now we're going to go through and we're going to actually create a new part, new design, and we're going to create the cam. The cam looks like this. Okay, so this is a little confusing. What it really is, if you can see it, is two circles, a big circle on bottom and a little circle on top, and those are connected by two straight lines. Then we have that rectangular hole in the middle that we're going to cut out. We'll worry about that at the end. Okay, the first thing we need to do is draw a circle. And you'll notice that the circle has a radius of 1.25. That would mean a diameter of 2.5. We need to double it, right? So we're going to come over here. We're going to make sure before we go in that our units are in inches. They are. That's perfect. If it's not, you can change the active unit by clicking on the icon and choosing the correct unit. Okay. I'm going to go through. I'm going to create a sketch. The sketch is cam is going to be upright. That's what this thing is. So I'm going to choose this plane. I'm going to start drawing. We're going to start with a circle, okay? A circle. We're going to start with a center diameter circle, which is C for a shortcut. I'm going to click on the origin. I'm going to drag outward, and notice again, this is a diameter here instead of a radius. If I right-click, uh, it doesn't look like you're actually allowed to do radius instead. So I'm just going to do this. Let's say if you have trouble with math, just do 1.25 times 2. Okay, that'll be easy. Hit enter. And I'm done with that circle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a second circle. This second circle is going to have a radius of 0.5, which means a diameter of 1. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to hit C for circle. I'm going to have to, I'm going to try to get it close, but it really doesn't matter. Notice this dotted line that comes up. It really doesn't matter from here, but it's going to be nice if I just go ahead and click like this. Diameter of 1, hit enter, hit enter. Okay, locked into place. Now what I need to do is get those circles the correct distance apart. So again, the distance between the two, center to circle, this one, center of the circle up here, is a distance of 1.75. So I'm going to come back, hit D for dimension, click on the center of this circle, click on the center of this circle. Dimension it to be a distance of 1.75. You're going to notice they're almost stacked on top of each other. Okay? Now, the problem right now, and the reason this is blue, is because I can still meet that requirement of having the circle 1.75 above the other one. What I haven't done it in right now is locked it in left or right. So what I want to show you real quick is the sketch palette menu. Over here in the sketch palette menu, we have all sorts of things that we can do, like slicing graphics to see inside parts, like doing sketches in 3D, but down here, we also have all of these constraints, and you will want to get to know this constraint menu. For instance, one of those is called the horizontal vertical constraint. So they took the horizontal and vertical from Inventor, and they combined them into one, and it's intuitive. So it knows if you have two points. So I click on this first. Notice it's highlighted. If I click on two points, it's going to line them up either horizontally or line them up vertically, depending on what it thinks it should be. So I'm going to click here. Second click on this circle. Notice they both turn black. Black is good. That means they're locked into place. This circle on top can no longer move around. I have constrained it to be vertically aligned with the center point of the other circle. So now we have a couple of steps left. Let's go add a couple of lines. Now the shortcut for line is L. So I could have also clicked on L, but I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to kind of draw them randomly. Okay, seems weird. I'm going to right click and choose OK. I'm going to hit the L button again over here and draw a line that's going to seem random. Right click, choose OK. What I want to do then, the command of the day, is the tangent constraint. It's right here. The tangent constraint basically takes a straight object and makes it line up with a circular object. It makes it come in and just touch the circular object. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click here. I'm going to say that I want to take this line and make it just touch this circle. What in the heck did I do here? It looks like I had two lines on that right side. So you know what? I'm going to go here. I hit escape. I'm going to delete this one. There we go. Okay. Now, 
All right, now I got things really funky going on. Okay, that's fine. Okay, because it's going to fix itself in just a second. Here's the thing. I'm going to come down. And I'm going to choose the tangent constraint again. I'm going to say this line also needs to be tangent to the top circle. So now notice it's touching both the top and the bottom. See the little symbol shows up? Symbol shows up. I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. Circle touches the top. Line touches the circle on the bottom. Okay. I'm going to click OK. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over to my sketch menu. I'm going to trim off the excess line that I have. So notice I drew it way longer than it needed to be, and that's on purpose. The T command will also get you there in the future. So I'll click here. I'm going to trim off the excess line at the top and the top, excess line at the bottom and the bottom, and I now have the completed shape that I want. Now, we have two choices here for the rectangular cutout that's at the center, the one that you'll see right here. That is an eighth of an inch wide and an eighth of an inch tall, and notice that it's centered right on the center of the circle. I'm going to go ahead and do it now. You could extrude first and then cut and get the rectangle second, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. Okay. So for this, if I choose R, it's going to be a point-to-point -point rectangle, and that's not what I want. I'm going to come down here to the menu, and I'll do a center rectangle instead. When I choose a center rectangle, I'm allowed to choose the center of the rectangle by clicking the center of the circle, and I come outward. And notice the rectangle centered here. So now I'm just going to type in point. Oops. Well, that was a mistake. Let me undo it with Control-Z and try that again. Ready? Rectangle. Center rectangle. Center of the circle. I click and drag outward. It's going to be 0.125. Tab. 0.125. Tab. Enter. It's locked into place. It's black. It's ready to go. I'm going to stop my sketch. Come up here. I'm going to look at my sketch. And now I just need to know what the extrusion depth is. And if I look at the dimensions here, I can see that the distance between these two, the front and back surfaces, is 0.125. So I'm going to hit E for extrusion. I want to do this here, here, and here. Everything but the rectangle. I want to go backwards. So I'm going to take and grab this arrow. I'm just going to start to go backwards. Notice it makes it negative. So I'm going to type in a negative. 0.125, and hit enter, and I'm done. There you go. You created a cam with a square hole for an axle to turn it later on. Congratulations. Hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully Fusion 360 makes a little bit of sense. You will get better at this. If, you're, if you've been struggling with Activity 4.2, have no fear. By the time you walk out of this class at the end of the year, this is going to be something that you would have created in seconds.